This is crazy. Tom Horn is, is joining us. Uh, Tom, before the break, we started getting into what are they doing, and, and you left off at a place that kind of made my hair stand up on end. You were talking about already developed adult versions of whatever this, this is that they're creating. I don't even know if we call it a human, but whatever this is that they made, the, are, are you saying there's actually adult versions of this? Yeah, well, the reference that you had made, actually, to, uh, and these are all things that people can Google, the Mail Online article, 150 human-animal hybrids grown in UK labs. And by the way, that is just a drop in the bucket. Uh, there are literally tens of thousands of laboratories uh, around the world, here in the United States, in Britain, in Austria, in China, all conducting the same kind of research. And what the public has been led to believe in the past is that, is that this only, you know, that the these were just embryos. And why would you create an embryo that's part human, part animal? It's been driven by the pharmaceutical yeah. industry that uses human-animal chimeras to get around the difficulties for getting permission to do experiments on humans, which is a daunting task. But if you create a human-animal embryo, now you can test drug therapies uh, on that human-animal embryo and see if the human enzymes or the human genetics in that construct are reacting in the way that you want it to. So it accelerates pharmaceutical industry, which is, you know, giant monster corporations around the world that stand to make literally billions, if not trillions of dollars in the future for new drug therapy. So that's what's been driving much of this uh, technology. But if, and here's something for people to Google. Go and Google this headline. Scientists want debate on animals with human genes. And they will find a Reuters so this is not weekly world news, right? Reuters news article, and the opening paragraph will say, a mouse that can speak, a monkey with Down syndrome, dogs with human hands and feet. British scientists want to know if what? such experiments are acceptable or if they go too far in the name of medical research. There's a long backstory behind this, so we don't have time to detail on this program, but the bottom line is these were scientists that had made application in Britain to receive public funds, tax dollars, for doing research at the embryonic level. Well, they were back. In this headline, they were back uh, about, oh, uh, let's say, one and a half years ago now. I forget what the, the date on this headline was. And they wanted to know if the public would now be willing to let them go to the next step, Josh, to start developing islands of Dr. Moreau, where they no. could raise these human-animal chimeras to full maturity to do long-term uh, research for the pharmaceutical industry but also military aspects. And they hinted in the article that they were already doing it anyway. Well, fast forward now to just July of this year, and the Academy of Medical Sciences in Britain admitted that the science not only is advancing so quickly, but that literally thousands of these things have been created and are being studied. And it was a day after they published their uh, report called Animals Containing Human Material that the Mail Online admitted to the one, I think it was actually two laboratories in Britain that had created these 150 human-animal hybrids. But if, and, and if, if somebody wants to email me, I will send them. I have the 200-page Academy of Medical Sciences report so they could verify this for themselves. And what do they talk about uh, in this report? For, uh, number one, extensive modification of the brains of animals by implantation of human-derived cells, I'm quoting now, which might result in altered cognitive capacity approaching human consciousness or sentience or human-like behavioral capabilities. This is in the summary of the report. Secondly, get this, Josh, quote, situations where functional human gametes, we're talking now about eggs, sperm, might, quote, might develop from precursor cell types in an animal and where fertilization between human and animal gametes might then occur. We're literally talking about the capacity for cross-species uh, creation. And then finally, cellular or genetic modifications that could re result in animals with aspects of human-like appearance, skin type, limb and facial structure, characteristics such as speech, so, end quote. So, um, the, the, yeah, the genie is way out of the bottle, and this is really just one tiny aspect of what is going on uh, 
uh, in, inside of this kind of research. Look at the MIT, MTech conference three weeks ago that says get ready for a new human species. Go right now to the Foreign Policy magazine, the Washington, D.C.-based award-winning magazine on global politics, economics, the kind of stuff you talk about. And look at their current article over there called The Future Is Now, in which they're talking about, uh, in the very near future, the emergence of a new form of human species. So what can I say? The technology is here. Now then you have to start imagining how quickly is this going to unfold? How quickly are we going to start doing to humans what we already are doing to plants and animals? And then what the social, maybe also spiritual implications of that might be. You know, a few things come to mind here. One of them is X-Men, because this sounds very much like, like the X-Men movies. The other one is Planet of the Apes, where the apes get uh, the, the ability to communicate and strategize together. And then the third one is, is kind of like Narnia, where you have that little goat boy, where he's like half human, half goat. And my mind is still telling me, even though I've been reading into this for four or five days now, my mind is still telling me, no way, this has to be fake. It, it has to be April 1st. But this is actually posing a threat to humanity. Are, are these new creatures, do we call them humans, Tom? Are, are, are these new creatures, do they have the same rights as humans? I mean, can, we, can scientists execute them? I mean, are, do, do they have uh, Miranda right? I mean, well, what other implications does this have? You're asking all the right questions, Josh, and so are other ethicists and bioethicists around the world. For instance, Jewish uh, bioethicists right now are saying if a person is part cow and part human, how much of them would need to be cow bef uh, before we could uh, offer them as a burnt sacrifice. The, uh, by the way, in Britain, when the embryology discussions were going on, which is kind of the backstory to that headline I said people should Google scientists want debate on animals with human genes, and then they should go and look at the – or email me, and I'll send them the Academy of Medical Science 200-page report. Um, the uh, – oh, I, I lost my train of thought. What was I saying? Uh, you were talking about how the the the, the cow human mix. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The, this British. discussion is going on uh, around the world. Uh, it isn't just Britain. The United States, by the way, published its own report. There's a report called Splicing Life. It's a 20-year-old report. And, and it forca it's a U.S. report. It was done by the, the, pres the president of the United States commissioned it that said that within 20 years, a la today, that this science would begin producing a new form of humanity. There's another 500-page report from the U.S. Uh, uh, from the United States. Um, that was called Converging Technologies. Same thing, that uh, sometime around the year 2012, a new form of humanity would begin to emerge. And your question was, my, th my train of thought, I apologize, just came back to me, you know, what kind of threat might this pose? There is a report that came out 12 months ago. It's called Global Governance 2025 at a Critical Juncture. Why is this important? Because it was published by the United States Office of the Director of National Intelligence, working with the European Institute of Security Studies, and what this report is about is what might be the trigger that would set in motion the sudden need for a world government, a global government. What could cause all of the, what, what threat could suddenly cause all of the governments of the world to suddenly need to come together under one umbrella in mutual defense of a, of, of a potentially catastrophic threat. And if you get this Global Governance 2025 that was published by the highest levels of intelligence in the United States and Europe, read page 35 where it starts talking about the emergence of a new form of humanity as a result of biotechnology. 